I quite like this much more than standard American buttercream, which is very just like sugar. Hey friends, I hope your week is off to a great start. Today we're going to be trying out another recipe from Claire Saffitz's cookbook, Dessert Person. This is her foundational recipe for French style chocolate buttercream. So this is actually a recipe that I've kind of been dreading making because Claire calls out in the book a couple times that this recipe is complicated, time sensitive, temperature sensitive, and a little bit fussy. She even provides alternate recipes to this buttercream. So if she's dissuading you from trying a recipe in her own cookbook, that makes me a little bit nervous. But regardless, we're going to try it out today because I want this for the chocolate layer cake that I'm working on. Uh, without any further ado, let's get right into it. As Claire notes, this recipe is fussy and requires a lot of coordination. So I've got a few things prepped already. So first up is the chocolate. As typical, I'm using this Guitard Semi-Sweet Chocolate, not sponsored. I just really like this brand. So I've measured it out, melted it down, and now it's cooling down to hang out around room temperature. Additionally, I've got my sticks of butter. These are softened. Next, in a small saucepan, I've got some granulated sugar and water. We're going to need this to make a sugar syrup. And while we're making this syrup, we're also going to be dealing with the eggs. We've got two whole eggs and two egg yolks. And don't worry, I did save my whites. Both the eggs and the egg yolks are at room temperature as well. Perfect. So those are all the moving pieces. We're all on the same page about what's about to happen here. So let's get into it. So over medium low speed, we're just going to mix this around to get the eggs broken apart and make it mostly homogenous. So that's just about 30 seconds of mixing. At this point, we're going to add in our kosher salt and just mix that for a moment to get it evenly incorporated. All right, cool. So this is where the coordination comes into play because we need to beat these eggs until ribbon stage over medium high. I'll show you what it looks like when we get there, but we also need to make our sugar syrup up to a very precise temperature. And ideally these things should be finishing at the same time. So fortunately my mixer does have a built-in timer. So I'm going to set this for five minutes and it will count down. That way I don't risk over mixing, um, but we'll keep an eye on everything. Keep it moving. Let's see how it goes. All right. And we are up over medium speed here. So I've got this pan over medium high heat and I'm stirring it with my heat proof spatula just until that sugar is dissolved. All right, so this has been mixing for five minutes over medium speed as Claire recommended. However, you can see there's really nothing happening here. It's frothy. So I think this needs to be more over like a medium high. Uh, so let's get this going again. I'm gonna set that timer for another three minutes. So our sugar mixture has just come to the boil. So I'm gonna stop mixing with the spatula and now we're gonna just swirl the pan and rinse the edges with a pastry brush like we're making caramel. All right, so that's been another three minutes. This time over more of a true medium high. Let's see how it's looking. Right, so we've got some thickness, but we're not quite to ribbon stage yet. And I think we'll go for another, say, three minutes. So we've just hit 230 degrees Fahrenheit, which is what we were looking for. So now we're going to lower the temperature down to medium low. We're looking for 238 as the ending temperature. So we're really close. All right. And I've got a good feeling here. All right, so those are hovering on the surface nicely. So I'd say that this is at ribbon stage. And the timing's great because our sugar syrup's almost there too. We've just hit 238. So you can see this is bubbling and scorching hot. So let's get this mixer turned back on and we're gonna slowly but carefully stream this in. All right, so we've got the mixer going over medium high and we're gonna pour this sugar syrup into the eggs, trying to slowly hit right where the egg meets the edge of the bowl. I poured incredibly slowly there. It took about five and a half minutes to get this sugar syrup fully poured into the egg mixture. So it's a really fine stream. We're gonna let this mix now on high speed for five to eight minutes until the mixture has cooled down to about room temperature. So we've been mixing this for 10 minutes at this point, five minutes to incorporate the sugar syrup, plus another five minutes. The size of the bowl don't feel hot at all to me. I'm going to quickly just ch check the temperature to see where we're at. And we are at 75 degrees Fahrenheit. My butter is at 72 degrees Fahrenheit and the chocolate is at 76 degrees Fahrenheit. So those to me are all in the same neighborhood. Um, so I'm feeling pretty good about where we're at. We'll just show you the texture here right now. So it's a little bit runny, but it's got a ton of volume to it. It seems to have deflated actually slightly during that beating period, but I think that's okay. All right, so we've got the mixer over high and we're gonna add our room temperature butter one tablespoon at a time. And after each tablespoon gets incorporated, we can add the next. 
I'm getting nervous. This is looking a little bit soupy. I don't know how I took the temperature of everything. It seemed like we were good and this looks really, really runny. So Claire noted that if it looks curdled and separated, just keep mixing it and it'll come back together. I don't know what's going on here, why the eggs deflated. This looks like a disaster. So I'm not going to waste $10 of chocolate dumping it in here when I think this is already going in the trash. Um, so we're going to start over and see if it works out better. Um, the only thing I can think is maybe I didn't pour the sugar syrup in fast enough so it cooled down too much and didn't cook and coagulate the eggs the way we wanted it to. So I'm going to try it again and just pour the sugar faster and we'll see how it goes. All right, so we've got our failed scrambled egg looking icing behind us. I'm going to put this in the fridge, figure something out to do with it. Um, I've got the other ingredients now, everything back down to room temperature through microwaving on low temperature, soaking the eggs in hot water, etc. So we're ready to go. So here in the stand mixer, I've got the two egg yolks and two whole eggs, kosher salt. So I'm setting the timer on my mixer for five minutes. We're gonna go straight to medium high since last time mixing over medium didn't really do anything for us. At the same time, I'm gonna make that syrup the exact same way we did last time. Everything there went pretty smoothly. So let's get right into it. All right, so this has been mixing for five minutes. And let's see what the texture is like here. So this is about where we took it to last time, and I'm wondering if it's not quite ribbony enough. So it's kind of falling off in globs. It's slowly melting back onto itself, but I'm wondering if we want a little bit more viscosity. So let me give this one more minute and see. All right. And this texture really seems like more of the same. So it's, it's thick, it's got some body, it's slowly dissolving. It doesn't seem to be getting more ribbony though, so I'm just gonna call it. So we've got our super hot liquid here. I'm gonna get this mixer back over medium high speed. I'm pouring much more quickly this time. So that was a minute and a half we got it all in. Last time I took an entire five minutes. And so now we're gonna beat this over high speed for five to eight minutes until it's cooled down to about room temperature. All right, and so I think we're in better shape this time. The outside of the bowl is actually warm to the touch. Last time it was not. So I think this is maybe a good sign that we're going to have a thicker mixture versus that really loose, soupy situation we had previously. So seven minutes total since we finished adding that sugar mixture in. And we are at 73. All right, the butter is 68, which is slightly cooler than room temperature. That's pretty close to the same, so I think we're in good shape. And with that, we'll start adding the butter in. It's not good. All right, and we are halfway through adding our butter. So far, I'm not liking what I'm seeing. This has kind of behaved similarly to last time where we've got some deflation, we've got some kind of soupiness going on here. It's not behaving anything like what I expected. Um, but let's keep adding the butter and see if it gets any better. So we've got all of the butter incorporated here. You can see the texture here looks kind of split and broken apart. I don't know if this is a temperature problem or what's going on. Claire said to continue mixing it and it'll just come back together. So um, no guidance on what the timing would look like for it to come back together. So I'm gonna set the timer for five minutes and let's see what happens here. All right, so this has been three minutes of mixing. Miraculously, the texture here is changing. So I'm gonna scrape these sides of this bowl down here. You can see the texture is somehow actually transforming back into frosting. You know, I was doubting Claire for a minute and I, I guess this is a lesson to not doubt Claire um, because it is coming back together. Um, I don't think we're quite there yet and it still looks quite deflated. So um, I'm gonna give this another like three minutes and let's see if we can get some volume in here. All right, so this has been another three minutes, and I think that this is probably as good as it's gonna get. Uh, this is the end texture here. It is light, fluffy, creamy. I'm gonna pop this over medium speed here, and we'll get our vanilla extract added in, and then just crank that up to get it really well incorporated, and then back down over medium speed. And now here I've got my chocolate. This is still fully melted, however, it's room temperature. It feels like nothing. Uh, so we're just gonna pour this in and hopefully nothing bad happens. All 
All right. Wow. <laughs> this looks so good. I was really in a stank mood for a minute here. <laughs> It can turn around quickly. So it was an emotional roller coaster of a recipe. This was a tough one. Uh, but the end result here I think is pretty good. So the texture, it's a really, really thick, rich looking chocolate frosting, almost like pudding. Uh, so it looks absolutely beautiful. The frosting is super rich and creamy. It is not sugar forward whatsoever. It's very like buttery, custardy, chocolatey with just a hint of sweetness. So I quite like this much more than standard American buttercream, which is very just like sugar. Um, this is actually having some nuance to the flavor. So I quite like the frosting. Definitely worth the effort despite um, <laughs> losing my sanity along the way. I solved the riddle of the curdled frosting. Those egg curds were actually little bits of butter that weren't emulsifying into the frosting. So this was caused by the butter being slightly too cold. So no amount of mixing was going to warm up that butter the way that we needed it to in any sort of reasonable time frame. So what I did was get my blow dryer, crank it up over high speed, high heat, and blasted the outside of my metal mixing bowl for about 30 seconds to a minute. Almost instantly, that butter started to warm up and emulsify, and I ended with a really creamy, luscious looking frosting. You can see this is as good as new. Uh, so now I have an entire extra batch of this French buttercream. I popped it into my freezer so I can save that for another project. So if you find yourself in a similar situation where you're beating your frosting and it just doesn't seem quite right, it could be that your butter is a little bit too cold. So try the blow dryer tip, and I really hope that helps you out. If you're looking for ideas for how to use this frosting on a cake, you can check out any of these videos and I'll walk you through step-by-step -step making the cake and assembling. So thanks so much for watching and I'll see you next time.